morning everyone let me welcome you to yet another session of the nptel course entitled postmodernism in literature in the first session we have taken a look at how difficult the category of the postmodern is it ranges from perhaps an inverted urinal presented as an art form by masur dushan to some of the novels of uh, kurt vonnegut and uh, the later on works which entirely challenge the idea of narration the idea of author and the very conception of novel and text itself So within these ambiguities we continue to discuss the idea of postmodernism and at the outset of this lecture it's very important to state that there are absolutely no definite definitions for this term now uh, this term postmodernism this defies definitions and addresses all kinds of categorization and classifications and nevertheless it is very important for us to address this question what postmodernism is for the purpose of this course whether postmodernism is a continuation and development of modernist ideas or is it a radical break with classical modernism is a question that continues to be asked and debated there are also a set of other uh, researchers and critics who are also of the opinion that postmodernism is perhaps the only term which could be used to talk about the story of what we are living at present whether this is a theoretical formulation in that sense as a radical break or a continuation from the postmodern idea from the modernist ideas or is it just about the story of the present is something that we would continue to figure as and when this course progresses and again talking about the various forms of manifestations of postmodernism and what it entails to be postmodernist whether whether this is a deplorable commodification of all culture the loss of tradition and value or whether this is on the other hand a release from the hidebound orthodoxies of high culture and a welcome dispersal of creativity which includes all all social groups which defies all kinds of marginality which uh, entirely questions the the idea of the center and includes and, and and celebrates inclusion and these are also certain things that we would perhaps continue to figure out and at the same time this is there's also this confusion about postmodernism as something entirely negative something entirely deplorable or does it also entail uh, certain celebratory aspects which would also characterize many things about the uh, the contemporary uh, ways of living and as and when we continue to situate this movement this uh, this idea and this trajectory of the contemporary known as postmodernism it's important for us to answer this question right at the outset when did postmodernism begin there are no particular dates that we can uh, give there is no particular decade there is no definite starting point for this movement known as postmodernism but however as we have mentioned right in the beginning of this course perhaps post war developments in general the post world war developments in general particularly in advanced media societies and capitalist economies could be characterized as the starting point of postmodernism when we talk about post war we particularly have in mind the uh, the range of events the range of unfortunate events that followed the second world war uh, we uh, uh, may particularly refer to the existential <coughs> delusion created by the very unfortunate events related to holocaust and the and the number of terrorists and related um, uh, activities which followed uh, the many unfortunate events which uh, dominated the 20th century could be considered as part of this post war development and the post war uh, existential angst and to answer the question whether this period has already entered we may also need to refer to some of the recent works such as uh, uh, what was postmodernism uh, by uh, brian mckeel where he argues that the postmodern period has already ended so whether this period began which began in the post war uh, uh, decades in the 1950s and 1960s whether this has already ended by the 1990s continues to be a matter of debate and contest and uh, there are also a number of theorists who ask this question whether we are now living in the postmodern age or not if the contemporary is not postmodern then is it post postmodern there are these multiple questions that one also needs to negotiate as in when we talk about postmodernism in various facets of uh, in different disciplines and in diverse uh, fields of study and also there are certain uh, philosophers such as habermas who hold the opinion that the project of modernity has not been fulfilled yet 
so he thinks that we are we are we, we have too soon relinquished the elements of modernity and has entered uh, post modernity the phase of post modernism too soon before even completing the original project of modernity so there are these uh, these questions are also embedded within these various philosophical concerns whether uh, within these uh, various um, articulations about the doubts regarding the very existence of post modernism and the very character of post modernism and finally to answer this question whether post modernism is limited to a particular historical period and to answer this we may also have to take a look at some of the precursors some of the uh, texts and authors and sites which have been identified as precursors to this moment to this post modern moment uh, for example there is uh, this 18th century uh, text authored by lawrence stern which has also been widely celebrated as the first post modern uh, novel in english and this text tristram shandy it has got a number of post modern elements built into it including the ideas of meta fiction and about non linear uh, the celebration of non linear narration etc and we also have uh, the uh, philosopher uh, nietzsche frederick nietzsche who had celebrated the death of uh, god and also leading to uh, many articulations about the death of the author at a later point and we know that these these texts have been identified as already postmodern though they do not historically and chronologically belong to the 20th century belong to the postmodern period so having said that uh, it's important to identify certain historical and cultural markers to situate this ambiguous period to in order to be able to identify certain ways in which the period could be uh, uh, could be uh, contained within a particular scope within particular historical conventions and paradigms so the first one as we have already uh, spoken about it's a post war uh, phenomenon and it's also post modernism post in the sense of after modernism this was also the period when the cold war culture was dominating and we all know that it uh, it comes to an end only towards the only by the 1990s this was also the period of neo liberalism and the, the post 1960s were also written uh, with by a number of complexities regarding conflicts regarding nationalist movements really, uh, regarding the rise and fall of dictatorships the various forms of nationalism the various forms of political articulations etc and this was also the period of the civil rights movements emerging in different parts of the world and we also know that this 20th century particularly to uh, from the 1970s onwards we witness an increasing uh, dominance of the age of computers the age of cyberpunk and uh, also it was the age of late capitalist culture as one particular uh, theorist jameson has very succinctly put it that postmodernism is the cultural logic of late capitalism and this was also uh, uh, very, very obviously the era of uh, globalization and we also have witness in spite of this overriding influence of technology digitization and all kinds of scientific progress and growth we have also witnessed a number of unpredictable incidents of terrorism as well so the historical cultural markers of post modernism also indicates that this is a plethora of events this is not just about a number of new things happening it's also about a number of unfortunate and a number of unprecedented things happening within uh, history society culture literature art and almost everything that concerns modern life and uh, accordingly when we continue to situate this term and we need to give a lot of emphasis to this uh the this term post which also means after and since the term uh, since the term post modernism also literally means after modernism we cannot really ignore the kind of influence that modernism has perhaps had on the figurations and on the trajectory that on the tra and on the trajectories leading to the post modern moment so as we have uh, noted multiple times by now this is perhaps a shift from modernity and perhaps this is also a way in which the post modern phase contests the, uh, the the uh, the number of privileges attributed by modernity to the general and the universal in matters of truth beauty and goodness so these three aspects were seen as very general universal uh, features in the previous uh, decades but now we know that these are all contested matters this is these are all uh, matters which cannot be narrowed down to a single definition or within or even within a single uh, framework so when we continue to situate the relevance of uh, the post in post modernism and also it's useful to remember that uh, anthony apaya has also written a 1991 essay entitled the 
is the post in post colonial the same as the post in post modernism so there are a number of debates and discussions about the idea of the post about the idea of uh, the, the the meaning of the post in post modernism and the paradoxical uh, fact also remains that since this is after modernism since post modernism is technically after modernism it also tries to identify itself by something it is in so there is an inherent paradox even in the uh, in in the nomenclature post modernism and uh, drawing certain uh, excerpts from this very influential and a helpful book post modernism a graphic guide which also is a beginners guide to post modernism and this also talks about the various aspects of post modernism through a number of uh, graphic representations it gives a genealogy of the post modern period beginning from the late romantic and the early modernist period onwards and uh, drawing from some of the tenets expressed in post modernism a graphic guide they uh, they they ask this uh, question about whether the post in post modernism means the result of modernism or is it the aftermath of modernism or is it the afterbirth or developments after or is it a complete denial or a rejection of modernism and in fact the meaning of the term post modernism is also situated within this confusion and this transition from modernism to post modernism in a way we can also say that the idea of post modernism also rests and obscures the sense of modernism and and, and also to sum up in in terms of uh, the various uh, sorts of definitions which have been circulating and the commentaries which are available we can also say that the term post modernism implies a complete knowledge of the modern which ha has been surpassed by a new age so there is absolutely no way in which we can cut out the aspects of modernism when we try to understand what post modernism is and incidentally this is also one of the most convenient and easiest frameworks within post modernism has been attempted to define and here we talk about some of the aspects which differentiates uh, post modernism from modernism and here we are only talking about certain often discussed tendencies and this is not an absolute comprehensive list and uh, a, a number of theorists as the, as a convenient method when they begin to uh, define and when they begin to and delimit the category of post modernism they have begun by talking about what mo what modernism is and then moving across and moving away from modernism towards the towards more post modern features and here we uh, begin to see that in the modernist period there was a certain sense of lament over the fragmentation of the world because when we talk about the socio political and historical aspects after the first world war which was also the modernist period the high modernist period things were not really getting better they were also very disillusioned by the way in which the war had uh, uh, impacted the world and it also took a lot of time for them to recover from whatever war had inflicted upon various societies of the world then so it also had led to uh, a, 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 a sort of a breakdown of the existential uh, question and there was a major crisis there was also a problem to be solved even during the modernist period but in the post modernist period the problems remain pretty much the same perhaps the problems have even escalated to a different level but the post modernists argue that this chaos is inevitable and the only recourse is to play with the chaos rather than attempting to solve it so from an attempt to solve these crises we have moved on to a paradigm where where it, it's okay to have such crises and whether it, where, where it's okay to, uh, uh, to humorously talk about these crises and also perhaps just ignore and play with this chaos so in that sense in the modernist sense there is a more focus in the modernist uh, paradigm for epistemological dominant and in, uh, which also means that it's about the idea of knowledge but in the post modern period it's more about ontology it's about being so there is a transition from a knowledge based system to a more a uh, being based system which makes all the more difference in subjectivities in ideas of uh, celebrating fragmentation so on and so forth and uh, while modernism lamented the fact that human sub subjectivity and history were changing and it is not going to be the same anymore we find post modernism completely celebrating this uh, uh, incoherence and this breakdown of identity and this entire uh, loss of subjectivity so we have yates in the modernist period talking about how the center cannot hold 
and things fall apart. So there is a very pronounced sense of loss and they are lamenting the fact that the center cannot hold anymore. But in the postmodern spirit, we find that there is an absolute celebration of this idea of fragmentation and the fact that the, this need not be mourned anymore at all. And during the, post during the modernist spirit, the modern uh, artists believe that art can provide unity. Art could be perhaps the solace. Perhaps the artist is the one who is about to solve all these problems. But postmodernism has uh, no pretensions of that sort. They do not believe that artists can resolve anything. In fact, some of the postmodernists also believe they, they believe that the artist is so important that he cannot even take care of his or her own uh, literary or cultural or artistic productions. And in the modernist period, we also have an element of cultivated austerity leading to a lot of seriousness and a lot of gravity uh, to whatever they are trying to produce. But postmodernism is about having a lot of a deliberate amount of uh, pleasure in art forms and writings and so on and so forth. And in the modernist period, there is a focus on reality through individual consciousness. But in the postmodern period, we understand that realism is only a an incoherent and deluding notion. There is absolutely no attempt to portray reality because the postmodern uh, theorists and the postmodern writers also believe that reality cannot be captured. Perhaps there are only copies, perhaps there are only simulations and there is absolutely, it's absolutely a futile attempt to uh, try and capture uh, any forms of reality in, and translate it into art forms. And in the modernist period, keeping in tune with whatever they believed in, we see a continuous struggle for wholeness and for unity. But postmodernism, on the other hand, it posits a radical indeterminacy and there is no attempt, there are no attempts being made to uh, create anything whole or to, uh, or to even uh, build a more coherent uh, form of uh, art or coherent form of uh, cultural production. And on the whole, when we talk about modern, when we talk about postmodernism as a departure from modernism, it's also important to reiterate that it's not really about anti-modernism. It is not an outright rejection of modernism either. And we cannot really say whether this is actually a continuation. But because uh, there are a number of works have also discussed this uh, aspect of um, the transition, uh, the, the nature of the uh, precise relation between the modernist and the postmodernist elements, and they've not yet been able to reach a consensus about whether this is a transition or a rejection or even an antithesis. But nevertheless, modernism gives us a framework to access postmodernism in whichever form, whether as a continuation or even as a departure from the uh, dominant modernist ideas. And here we also note a very interesting paradox. In fact, the tendency to see things in seemingly obvious binary contrasting categories, it's usually associated with modernism. It's a very, very modernist uh, uh, system of uh, thinking and system of uh, knowing. It's a very epistemological thing. And this tendency to dissolve binary uh, categories and expose their arbitrary uh, cultural codependency is associated with postmodernism. So in fact, there are these two contrasting elements modernism and postmodernism and uh, to, through all of these attempts to make sense of postmodernism to give a sense of meaning to postmodernism and attribute certain frameworks and try to delimit uh, the postmodernism as a category in, in fact is a very modernist trait and in other words it's throughout the scores also what we are trying to do is to understand postmodernism in a very sequential and uh, modernist sense and though this although this is only for heuristic purposes only for the purposes of learning and only for the purposes of uh, uh, frame particular systems of thought and systems of knowledge within frameworks, we understand that there is an interesting and inherent paradox even in the way uh, any course or any uh, learning experience related to postmodernism itself is framed. So moving on, if we talk about the general characteristics of postmodernism, there are a number of characteristics which could be listed and some of them we can also note that it's a continuation from the modernist period. Uh, we have reflexivity and metafiction, self-referentiality, uh, irony and black humor, parody and playfulness, instability of meaning, uh, rupture with traditions, pastiche which also means mixing of uh, genres, intertextuality, hybridity and also, the, uh, and also mixing the conventions of high and popular art. If we talk about some of these uh, uh, some of these items in detail, for example, uh, self-reflexivity, metafiction and uh, self-referentiality, it's, 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 it's about a way in which if we take the case of a novel, the telling becomes more important, more conspicuous than the tale itself. 
and also we notice that uh, technically the element of minuses which forms the basis of all forms of art perhaps in a conventional uh, way it's a weekend we do not find the element of mimesis uh, being privileged over the other forms in, in, in a self-reflexive uh, metafictional form of narration and it's also about writing uh, for example uh, in, in a book in a book structure uh, for example if uh, if this is the novel that we have in mind the novel will be talking about the the process of writing let's say another book and we will also have a number of analysis happening about the book this is within the same novel and these analysis interestingly are not provided by the reader but by the author himself so here we find a book within the book and this book written within the book is also discussed and analyzed we find a subtle way in which the uh, distinction between fiction and literary criticism also being broken down over here so this is uh, one of the ways in which the postmodern texts challenge the idea of narration the idea of uh, uh, conventional forms of narration and the uh, various attributes of art and uh, one of the examples of this kind of work would be uh, Stephen King's Stephen King's uh, novel Misery, which uh, engages with uh, the metafiction through the uh, genre of horror. And when we talk about hybridity, again, that's another interesting uh, attribute to the postmodern text. If we take an example of uh, uh, Julian Barnes' uh, novel Flaubert's <coughs> Parrot, we find that within the space of the novel, a number of things are being made, uh, being being used. For example, uh, in terms of hybridity, we have Julian Barnes' uh, novel talking about biography, using excerpts from dictionary. There's also obviously elements of fiction. There's pastiche. There is also interestingly an examination paper which also forms partly the narrative technique and also uh, contributes to the telling of the novel. So uh, altogether when we took a look at the general characteristics of postmodern texts we understand that there is no sense which uh, uh, a conventional sense of a beginning middle or an end one could begin anywhere and also perhaps maybe it's more or less like some of the contemporary music videos where it does not really matter where the video begins uh, it is no linear uh, connection it's not coherently uh, uh, presented it, it's, it's all uh, perhaps a play of pastiche a mixing of genres no matter where you begin and uh, uh, in, in, no matter in which way you mix the video it's it pretty much gives the same result so this sort of a play when we find it in a in the medium of a text it becomes all the more interesting and we find that in a number of uh, 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 cultural productions and the popular culture of the contemporary we can find almost all of these uh, elements are uh, being getting used consciously unconsciously deliberately and even quite inadvertently and uh, uh, about irony and black humor, in fact, conventionally, aspects related to death would be spoken with a lot of uh, gravity, a lot of seriousness. It's not something to joke about. But we find it in a number of texts produced after the uh, Second World War, uh, given that the World War itself had uh, uh, given rise to a number of irrational political events, including the Holocaust. We find some novelists using the technique of irony and black humor to uh, talk about even death in a very uh, uh, irreverential manner. For example, we have certain uh, novels by Joseph Heller, uh, Thomas Pynchon and Kurt uh, Vonnegut in, and also uh, one uh, uh, short story by Donald Bethelm, The School, where he talks about the ironic death of plants, animals and people connected to the children who sit in one class. So uh, the, the postmodernists generally they begin to treat very serious subjects as jokes much to the uh, shock of certain contemporary readers and much to the alarm of uh, the conventional uh, moral uh, uh, fabric and the conventional ways in which particular emotions and particular attributes are generally being dealt with. 
So altogether in the postmodern period we can say that there is no organizing principle in this chaotic world and there is no attempt to make a uh, make a coherent organizing principle either and there is also a general distrust of ideologies and also of narrator and author of modern assumptions about history identity culture pretty much there is nothing much that the postmodern text or the postmodern author or the postmodern site relies upon everything is viewed with a lot of distrust and everything is seen as futile and totally meaningless and not contributing to the meaning making process of culture art or anything in general in order to wind up this discussion about the characteristics of postmodern art the characteristics of postmodernism i use certain excerpts from pramod nayar's interesting work from contemporary literary and cultural theory published in 2010 where he offers a very interesting uh, sum up of the characteristics of postmodernism the postmodernism first of all is a refusal to accept any system of thought or theory as a universal it focuses on the particular focuses on the uh, uh, on the local rather than the universal and secondly there is a preference for fragmentation over unity dispersion uh, over linear order the anecdote over the epic so thirdly we have the blurring of boundaries between high and low culture as we have seen in the introductory session itself there is absolutely no distinction between an art form presented in the form of an inverted urinal or a digital form of art or even the works of shakespeare everything is seen with equal reverence or with equal irreverence and fourthly there is a sense of playfulness a contingency and self reflexivity associated with anything considered postmodern and fifthly there is an interest in the surface the image and the copy rather than in the depth the reality and the original so very often we can find that the surface is being com- the depth is being compromised for just presenting the surface reality for image and the copy for the original in in so much so that after a while it becomes almost irrelevant and in, entirely uh, nonsensical to even try to distinguish between the copy and the original between the image and the reality or whether this is actually something at the surface level or something which has got a deeper meaning and sixthly there is a fascination with the strategies of representation rather than the truth of or behind the representation truth becomes very contested and in the postmodern period in a very typical sense truth becomes absolutely unimportant as well it's not important to know whether something is the truth or not it's the, the, the even the pursuit of this sort of uh, the single truth the uh, the single idea of uh, meaning everything becomes absolutely a, a meaningless affair itself and next there's an emphasis on discourse the language and the narrative than on the reality they supposedly convey so even during our discussions we will find that there's a lot of way in which our uh, critical analysis would also engage with discourse language and the narrative rather than on the uh, content or the ways in which the text represents reality here we are again reiterate the fact that mimes as a uh, as a uh, as the basis of uh, narration as the basis of uh, uh, representation of literary and uh, artistic text it uh, ceases to play any sort of a role and there's a desire for you know, flows shifts and multiplicities rather than order organization and tyrannical coherence so we find that there is a Uh, a, a certain way in which the postmodern narration the postmodern texts and the postmodern sites they resist all kinds of attempts to uh, linear order any kind of structural organization uh, nevertheless as we mentioned before as part of the course we do try to bring in a sense of uh, order organization and at least a, a marginal kind of a coherence in order to make sense of this entire phenomenon known as postmodernism So as and when I wind up this uh, lecture I uh, I I also leave you with this question whether postmodernism could it be a reaction to the failure of modernity because the 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 modernity the face of modernism though it promised a beginning at the beginning of the project it failed to deliver a number of these things 
and particularly with the, um, the post world war events and also about the various forms in which the political economies the uh, consumerist culture the human nature itself was undergoing a radical change in the 1960s and thereafter we do see a sense of uh, uh, the the failure of modernity creeping in and i'm leaving you with this question whether postmodernism is a reaction to this failure of modernity is it a reaction against the betrayals of the modernist movement in the arts ideas of progress and civilization yeah we do not know whether we would try to find whether we would be able to find a definite answer to this question but definitely this question will help us engage with postmodernism in the context of uh, modernity in the in a way in which it departs from modernism and also to be able to Uh, provide a framework for talking about arts ideas of progress and civilization in the postmodern age thank you for listening and we look forward to seeing you in the next session